or skeletal. With the cabinet, uh, the cabinet is shortly to approve. I believe the cabinet paper has been completed and submitted to approve the formal and final restructuring plan for CLECO. We expect thereafter the judicial managers will shortly in the well, I don't know what time frame, but in a couple of weeks or what a couple of weeks or so, will return to the court and indicate to the court that the government has uh, thrown its full support behind the restructuring plan, which was identified when they last went to the court and had tentative approval for it. Um, we are going to go ahead and implement uh, the Barbados portion of it. We are still waiting on our OECS partners to make a decision whether they're going to participate or not and at what level. But we feel people have been waiting long enough and we've taken the decision that we're going to move ahead with that restructuring plan. Basically, that plan uh, says that we, uh, that we create a, a new company, uh, what we call it NUCO. Um, we put the insurance business sanitized as it is into uh, that new company that the government would create. They will create two property trusts, uh, one in OCS and one in Barbados, but for Barbados purposes, one here, in which the assets will be placed. Um, those um, property trusts will then, of course, we will then issue um, bonds against the value of the assets. Of course, you know there's a deficit between what is owed as liability and what is the asset value. Uh, I believe about four, four hundred million dollars, but they're going to do a, a current valuation to see what's the difference. Uh, once that is done, uh, we will invite those persons who um, have uh, EFPAs. To, uh, to, to take a, a traditional annuity structured appropriately to suit their investment. Those persons who are corporate, and that's with the individuals, those persons who are corporate, from my memory, will be uh, given uh, interest in the new companies um, and in the asset companies. And, uh, um, and uh, 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 from there, we expect that, um, that the orderly restructuring of that entity should be that In relation to the other one, four, four, seasons. four Seasons, in relation to Four Seasons, we have, the cabinet has made a tentative selection on the new preferred investors, but we have broadened the scope to invite, uh, they are two shortlisted, the other one to do, uh, to, to do a counter proposal. Basically, cabinet has asked for both to, to uh, uh, revise their proposal and come back. We expect that that should be done this week. They should report to us next week. Cabinet will make a final decision, and then in that regard, uh, we will engage in the process of a handover of that project back to the private sector. Minister, the couple of sorry, sorry. The Albarak uh, matter is uh, still receiving the attention of the uh, government. There is a proposal for a, an investor to uh, purchase the property, um, for that investor to then uh, lease it back to government. Um, we believe that that proposal went to the court. The court accepted it, but asked for additional <coughs> things to be done. Um, those things uh, are currently being done. We are negotiating the proposal to see uh, the terms and conditions for the sale and lease back. It came to the Ministry of Finance, it came to me, in fact, and we did not uh, support the terms. We felt the terms were far too generous to the person who was investing. We've asked for a renegotiation of those terms, and once that is done, then hopefully we will be able to take a decision and get that particular saga behind us. So Minister, so your confidence add. not the standing. Yes. You, you, there are a couple of issues here that I want you to address in the, in the public surface. One mm -hmm. is that you you would have heard your political opponents make the charge yes. that all of this we could well be doing in vain because according to them you have a, an $800 million gap to fill and what you are proposing to do, the cuts, fall far short of that. And to that extent, mm -hmm. the, 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 it's like suggesting that we are spinning top in mud and we are not necessarily going to be able to pull out of this in the kind of way that we expect, given the fact that over the past couple of years, we've had so many of these statements coming from you and from the government, but from you in particular, mm -hmm. and we seem to have a downward spiral nonetheless. And the other thing I'm interested in here is this special uh, project, the adopting of sections of major highways. Um, exactly how is that 
propose to work? I will have to direct you to the private sector people who are doing it. What government has done is to facilitate uh, it to happen. I believe the uh, proposal which they have uh, includes some planning permissions and uh, it's before the town planner for a decision. But basically what I have described is what was presented to the government and uh, that is as much details as I can go into it. It is, it is about for private sector companies to adopt at, at their cost and fund to raise the capital and fund uh, the uh, maintenance as they do with roundabouts, for example. Each will take a small section of the highway and be, and be responsible for maintaining that. I assume they will pool the resources together and select the companies and those companies will uh, will, of course, uh, carry out the maintenance work. That is as much as I can uh, say to you on it at this stage, but uh, afterwards, if you need if need me, I can direct you to the principles. Well, what about the overall gap that we're talking about? Okay, that you, you mean the fiscal, the fiscal, the fiscal board, gaps? Yeah. Look, <laughs> you know, we always said, David, that the uh, issue of dealing with the fiscal deficit could not, because of its, its size, could not be done overnight in one fell swoop. We had, because of the stability of the economy and maintaining that balance, we had to bring that down gradually. What the measures that we have announced, uh, the additional measures that we have announced, is to accelerate that slightly because, or to deepen that process slightly, because of the situation pertaining to a fall off in our revenues, particularly for the first six months of the current financial year. And uh, expenditure has not grown, it's not expanded in that way massively, but we have had that reduction in expenditures. Now, you have to understand something, David, and I, and I, you know, I, I listen to sometimes when I'm in my car, the calling programs, and I hear a lot of statements being made, but I want to make it very clear, because you said you've heard a lot of statements from me. When I became Minister of Finance in 2010, late 2010, I might add, I believe in October, set, late September. Or it was September. Right, September, autumn. When I became Minister of Finance. The previous year, the deficit was 9.9%. The economy declined by 4.7%. I introduced measures, I believe, in October, November, in relation to dealing with that fiscal deficit. We had just brought out our medium term fiscal strategy, the first one to be with, with those uh, matters. The following year, we reduced the deficit from 9.1% to 4.7% of GDP. We had economic growth, a decline in economic growth in 2009-10 of 4.7%. The year after I became Minister of Finance and we had a full implementation of policy, the economy grew by 0.5%. We went into 2012. In fact, that's the year that VAT outperformed all expectations. The VAT performance behind the increase to 17.5 was frankly spectacular. We went into 2012, and when we hit the middle of 2012, the world economy started to buckle again. Britain went into a double dip recession. The United States started to flounder. Europe collapsed. Tourists who aren't coming here. And don't let anybody fool you, David. This economy is driven by the foreign exchange earning sectors. When those sectors are done, structurally and significantly, it affects everything that goes on here. When, when we earn foreign exchange and it is redeemed at the central bank, you get Barbados dollars. Those dollars go into the system. Those are what generate the activity in construction, in retail and wholesale. That is what drives it. So no, you, you, you let me finish. You see, because you have a whole program every Monday to lash me. I only have this opportunity <laughs> to respond to you humbly. So let me talk a little bit. invite you from time to Good. time. Yeah, 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 you yeah, want yeah. an invitation to come next week. Yeah. Come. No, 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 no. So, so, so these are the facts. These are the facts. And we had that situation. It then dragged into 2012. And we said from April when we began to see this decline in the foreign reserves. Up until that point, we had maintained in the worst global recession. The hardest hit for tourism, hardest hit for international business. 
we had maintained our foreign reserves at an average of $1.4 billion, or 16 to 17 weeks of imports, right up to April. Now, when people say that we try to mislead people in the election, that the economy was stable, and we, because I know that's, that's, that's what y'all say, the economy was stable, and then all of a sudden, we maintain it, and the stability that we were talking about in the economy was in relation to the foreign reserves. We said that and we maintained that. Well, come April, six weeks after the general election, money starts to disappear. People calling on the central bank, but the money is not coming in. And we immediately activated the economic response mechanism. We had a national consultation. We had meetings all over the place. We met with unions, private sector, everybody. We said what the facts were. I heard somebody on your program sitting right next to you say that in 1991, we knew why the Sandiford, Sandiford had to take the measures. Now, so boy, or excuse me, Sandiford had to take the measures. We knew we had a balance of payments problem, but we don't know. We haven't heard why the measures have to be taken down. Absolutely untrue.